What is going on everybody and welcome to part three of our experimenting with neural networks. In this tutorial we're going to be revisiting the past with the MNIST data set and everyone's like oh god not MNIST again. Well hopefully this will be something a little different than you're used to with the MNIST data set. So first I'm going to start uh, just create a new directory and I'm going to call it uh, MNIST data MNIST data set and we'll come into here create a new file uh, and then we'll call this MNIST data creation.py. Cool. And we'll open in Sublime and we'll get started. So, first of all, to use MNIST, uh, we want to do from, let me zoom in a little bit, from tensorflow.examples.tutorials.mnist import input data. And then we're going to say the, you know, the MNIST data set itself is equal to input underscore data dot read underscore data sets. And then where do we want to read those to? We'll read them to MNIST uh, base. Oh, we'll just read it to MNIST data. And then, not a period, it was supposed to be a slash. MNIST data, and then we're going to say one underscore hot equals true. That way it's just, it returns like a, a, a vector with 10 options, and the one that's true is the index. That's one, and then the rest are zeros. Now to iterate through this, all this stuff should be stuff you've seen before if you followed mine or anyone else's pretty much um, deep learning tutorial, or really just you could have used the MNIST data set for a lot of stuff actually. Anyway, uh, mnist.train dot next batch 100. So you would use batches uh, if you're training like a neural network or something like that. In this case, it doesn't really matter, but we can use next batch to yield ourselves uh, the next set of training that we want to use. In this case, 100. Um, and that's it. We're just going to use 100. That's how we're going to decide how many samples actually in total we want to have. Uh, conversely, you, you, you could pass, you know, like a number like that. Uh, I don't, they don't have that many, just for the record. I think it's like 40,000 and then 10 and 10 or something like that. I forget the exact numbers. But anyways, we'll just use 100. Uh, just for the record, there's, there's mnist.train.test and then there's a dot validate. Um, for our purposes, we can actually use train and test because we're not going to actually try to test anything uh, during training anyway. So really, you just would you would probably want to leave validate just to use as out of sample testing. But otherwise, you can actually use both of these. But we don't have to. It'll create a lot of data, plenty for us to work with. Um, so the next thing is, yeah, you got batch X's, batch Y's, and then we could say like the data for the you know the input data basically would be batch X's. And then we could say it's the zero width. And then we could say the late, whoops, the label, the label is batch Y's data label batch Y's. So now what we could do is we can print uh, data and print the label. But of course, you know, you're probably not going to really know what you're looking at also. Yeah. So this is going to download everything. Um, Instructions for update. It looks like there's some sort of something's going to be outdated pretty soon with grabbing this MNIST data. Just follow the deprecation warning if you get it or the error if you get it. But otherwise, I'm, I'm just going to continue along. Um, so anyways, we can see that this is our, our, our data for the image um, or the number. And then down here, we can see it's a zero. We can't really tell that that's a zero, but it's also a 28 by 28. And this isn't really structured that way yet. So it's just one array. So it's just one long string basically, and you would need to reshape it if you wanted to see what it looked like for real, um, but we'll get there. So anyways, um, that's that. Now what we want to do is, well, first of all, there's a, there's a few things for us to, to think about here, um, but even just with a regular neural network, um, you know, there's probably no reason to have this kind of uh, precision. Like we don't, we don't need that. Um, so we, could, we can handle for that. Um, and we can handle for some other stuff too, but first let's just go ahead and visualize this. That way as we change the precision, you can see what changes that actually makes. Um, so first we're gonna go ahead and import uh, matplotlib.pyplot matplot as plt, and let's go plt. Mm, you're really making me angry. Oh my God, why is this happening? How do I like, there we go, cool. 
<laughs> Import NumPy as MP. Oh, are you kidding me? Jerk. <laughs> That's really annoying. Anyway, I feel like if you hit tab, then sure, I want you to auto-complete when I hit tab. But if I hit the enter button, mm, 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 I don't like it. I don't like it. Stop that. Now, um, the next thing is let's go ahead and just plt.mshow. Well, well, we can't mshow the data because the data is just one long string. So actually, we want to reshape it. So let's say pixels equals data dot reshape. And then we're just going to reshape it to be a 28 by 28. Now, plt.mshow pixels and then plt.show. And now we can kind of see what we're working with. Again, still kind of your typical what you would see in any um, you know, MNIST tutorial. There's your eight, lovely, beautiful. Uh, we can also convert to gray because it should be. So CMAP equals uh, gray. And you get what we're looking for. Now, <clears throat> what we want to do next is there's really no reason to have, like I was saying before, any precision. Like we really just want to threshold this. We want everything to be a zero or a one. We want it. Our, our goal is to get rid of as much of the bloat as we can. So in a character, like this character generation, character level generative model. Um, we want we want to simplify it in the sense where we have as few characters as possible, right? We want to condense this data as much as we can. So one way that we're going to do that is by um, thresholding the data. So one way we can do that with, with, with our NumPy here is basically data right here. Um, we can use NumPy.roundInt. So NP np.rint we round batch x's and that's going to round it to the nearest integer so we'll do the same thing with batch y's and then let's run it and what we should see is a threshold image with fruit there it is so there's a one sure enough zero one all right so looks good let's just do one more just so we can get the idea of a threshold because sometimes when you threshold it's going to fill in holes and gaps and it might look kind of funky um wow another one come on man give me something else I'm sick of this one okay so look at two you know maybe there was a little hole there but anyway you get the idea now the next thing is we still have a lot of um wasted characters in the sense of these like the periods here, right? The decimal point. So what can we do there? Well, we could say uh, dot as type int, and then as type int, run that again. And really, rather than data, we should just print. Uh... Okay, so here's a, another good example where probably if you didn't threshold it, some of these were a little lighter. Um, but otherwise, you know, you can still tell that's a two. Almost actually looks like a coiled up snake. Like you can right here and here's a snake head <laughs> right but we still can't tell that that's a two here but um since you guys have already kind of seen where we're going we could rather than print data uh print the pixels um and you should be able to actually visually see what you're looking at uh, we'll wait for it here okay seven so if i just clear out the seven and we zoom out a little bit you should be able to tell like just by looking at this yeah, that is a seven. Like you can tell without even rendering an image. Now, um, so we've simplified this quite a bit. Like that's much more condensed than it was initially, but we still have things that we could change. So the next thing is, this is a generative model. It takes in a string. So is there any reason for us to, to adhere to any array structure? Um, and of course the answer is, is, is no. Right, so all these extra spaces here, do we really need those? Right, like there, there's no need for that. So, and like I said before, uh, with the brackets, we could get rid of them. I actually kind of think they're they probably kind of helpful to the model. So I kind of want to leave the brackets, but we definitely could get rid of the spaces here. It doesn't need to be an array. So we can convert it out of an array and then always convert it back to an array. Uh, later. And so anyways, in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to actually convert this to string form and condense it even further uh, and then be on our way to actually creating a, a much a, a large training set uh, of condensed data and see what we can figure out. So anyways, 
That is all for now. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. If you want to support me in the content, this is my full-time job. You can head to pythonprogramming.net slash support for a variety of options. Otherwise, I will see you all in another video.